Who are we missing? So as we're started here, Mr. Crown, and I just wanted to um, make sure that you see that we have some guests with us this evening who we will yes, be honoring. I do. And I would just ask that everybody who's not speaking, please, um, if you don't mind muting yourself, that way we have a little bit less feedback, no. and that would be appreciated. We need, there's Ms. Dando, Mr. McAvoy, Ms. Kowalski, Dr. Ross. We need Ms. Santos and Ms. Castro Giovanni. Ms. Santos is here. Ms. She, oh, there you are. Is Ms. Castro Giovanni with us? I don't see Ms. Castro Giovanni yet. OBEN Live is here. That means we're now streaming. So I. Dr. Ross? It looks like we're waiting on Ms. Castro Giovanni. Yes, just Ms. Castro Giovanni. Okay. Okay, I just texted her to see what to see if she's having a problem. So, Mr. Cronin, uh, you might see that we have uh, Mr. Stephen Katz joining us, and he's here as a colleague and mentor of uh, Ms. Lowy's. Am I correct, Ms. Lowy? Can you give me a thumbs up if that's what? Yes. Um, oh, here's Ms. Hmm. Esther Giovanni. Um, there she is. To hear our comments about our retirees this evening. But I think everybody is now here. Everybody Mr. is here. Yes, indeed. Okay. So, at this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order. With the pledge? Yes. Um, okay. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, 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 Thank you. Yes, I have the correspondence. Um, Thank you, Ms. Santos. Sorry, I, I can't be on video and read it from my phone at the same time. So we had a correspondence on 6-11-2020 from Grace Serby regarding Villanova letter to parents. We had one on 6 20 It was an email from uh, Dina McAvoy regarding Mr. Kuzner, the French teacher. And on 6 20 we had an email from Lou Morello regarding the budget. Okay, thank you, Ms. Santos. Uh, Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Seinfeld. Thank you, Mr. Cronin. So it is truly my honor this evening to thank and recognize a number of individuals and thank them for their service to our district. So I'll begin with our teachers. Some were able to join us this evening. Some are watching the live um, stream and not as part of the meeting. So Ms. Carrie Schmierman, thank you for your service to our district since your beginning in 1997 as a teaching assistant at Vernon, a teaching assistant at the high school, and then a special education teacher since 1999. Ms. Schmierman has always taught her students from the heart and the brain and has always worked with all of us to be sure to have a, a program for all of our students that matches each of their needs. She has also been involved in after school programs, student council, home tutoring, curriculum writing, and summer literacy. And so we thank and honor Ms. Schmierman for her service. Next, Ms. Bralla, a teacher from Vernon, who joined us in 1998 as a leave replacement. She has most recently served as an AIS or academic intervention teacher at the Vernon School. She has served with us for 22 years. She has worked with summer literacy. She has worked as a mentor to other teachers and she has done curriculum planning and development 
and has been a real go-to as related to serving our students who need additional support, particularly as AIS, Academic Intervention Services. Margaret Morgan, who has been, has served the district for 33 years. She's a, retired as a special education, education teacher at the Vernon School, but she started with us in 1987, teaching at the Theodore Roosevelt School. She has um, been a literacy expert for us, and she has also made contributions in the extended school year program and in our summer programs. So we thank and congratulate Margaret Morgan. Paige Hinckley, who has worked at both the high school and at Vernon and is certified and tenured, of course, as a reading teacher. She has also worked as uh, preparing students for the ELA assessments, home instruction, summer special education, and we wish her only the best and thank her for her 24 years of service and we wish her only good health. Erin um, Sturvins, thank you for joining us this evening, who is spending her 33rd year with us. She began as a special educator at the Roosevelt School in 1987 and is retiring from the Vernon School. She has worked as a home instructor. She has mentored new colleagues and she has also provided summer support. She is always there for all of us with a smile on her face and does whatever we need her to do to meet the needs of our students, particularly those with disabilities. Mr. Robert Brown, social studies teacher, otherwise known as Bob Brown, joined the high school social studies department in 1992. He has been with us for 28 years. In addition to serving as a social studies teacher, Bob, we thank for his, for his expertise as a track and field coach, a cross country coach, for his curriculum writing and his provision of home instruction, and we wish him only the very best. And last, last but not least, Ms. Susan Fagan, who has served as a chemistry teacher in Oyster Bay High School for the past 18 years. She has also served as a Regents Review Instructor she has done summer curriculum and she has served as a class advisor and we wish her only good health in retirement. And then we have Miss Ellen Lowy who is with us this evening. And instead of um, reading to you from my own notes, I decided to pull out, oopsie, her letter to me dated December 2nd, 2013. Dear Dr. Seinfeld, I am writing in response to the position of special services, director of special services listed in the New York Times. I've had the, I won't read every word by the way. I have had the fortunate opportunity to be a part of a team within the West Hempstead educational community for the last nine years. I have engaged in meaningful dialogue about how to challenge students and provide a positive learning environment for all students with a particular emphasis on student with disabilities. I think my extensive experience and enthusiasm for learning and working with challenging students provides a strong foundation for understanding how to further assist a district as it continues to promote the highest standards of excellence for its staff and students. Ms. Lowy has done all of that and more. She has served as a role model for all of us. She has worked diligently to bring many of our students back to district and created programs. She has been an incredible collaborator and leader. And while it isn't that many years that Ms. Lowy has been with us, I am going to miss you, Ms. Lowy, personally so very much as a colleague, as a special educator, and as my very own psychologist. So I'd <laughs> like to thank you in all seriousness for all your support to our entire team. And I'm so glad, and I know we'll cry again, that you took the opportunity to conclude your beautiful career starting in the New York City schools and working as an administrator in several other schools, including West Hempstead and Patchogue Medford. Thank you for ending with us. We are forever indebted to you and I'm not losing your cell phone number because I'm still going to need your help as we get through the summer program and beyond. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Seinfeld, just uh, on that note too, I'd like to congratulate all the retirees. Um, just do some quick numbers in my head. We're over 180 years of service to this district. It's incredible that it's so many years and thank you so much for your dedication to our district. It's, it's a great place to work and you've seen it, you know it, and the students are great. And just once again, thank you for over 180 years of service to our district. Thank you so much. And I would just like to share that <clears throat> retirees will be getting a gift that you would be getting this evening. And it says, the world is your oyster. So a little play on words that from Oyster Bay to your future oyster, we only wish you the best. But I am not done with retirees. Miss Robin Dando, 25 years mm. of service. And what she said in what's coming out as a press release, I wanted to make sure that the kids were number one focus. And she has done just that. She got involved in the district as a PTA leader when her beautiful daughters, Jamie and Allison, were in school. She was asked to serve an expiring term in 1995. And then she has served for 25 years on the Board of Education. She <clears throat> served as president from 2002 to 2005, as vice president from 2001 to 2002, 2006 to 2007, 2012 to 2014. And even though her daughters graduated from our amazing school district, she has continued to serve all of us and serve our community so beautifully. It's interesting that one of her quotes in an upcoming press release is talking about the night waiting for the budget count and continuing the work that we know is so important as we move in the right direction. She has been instrumental in contract negotiations with our various bargaining units in leading and asking such good questions about curriculum, instruction, and student achievement. And of course, you know the various capital projects that have real been realized under Ms. Dando's stewardship. We all turn to you, Ms. Dando, as our historian, our parliamentarian, our confidant, and I just hope that you know how much we appreciate your service and we will miss you so. And before I ask any Board of Education colleagues if they'd like to say anything, I would just like to share with you that you'll be receiving a few gifts and maybe I can drop them off this evening if you don't mind. So thank you, Ms. Castro Giovanni and the Booster Club. You are oh, yeah. your towel, your yeah. and towel, but also from our Oyster Bay Oyster Bay High School PTSA, and thank you, Mr. McAvoy and Mrs. McAvoy for helping this to happen. We know you're always chilly, so we have a three-quarter zip long sleeve shirt for you to wear when you do come and visit us. And this is what I know you've been waiting for, your Oyster Bay blanket, because we know that you're always cold. So we want you to enjoy the summer, the winter, and everything in between. Thank we will you. miss you Thank so you. much. Thank you for your service. Dr. Seinfeld, and to Ms. Dando, um, I met you about eight years ago when I first started going to board meetings. And ever since then, when I decided to run, I've always looked to you for help. And even when I became vice president, I've always called you and looked for you for help. And especially this year, uh, for being a very busy year, um, you and I have spoke a lot on the phones and all I can say is thank you so much for helping me to help this district and all of your years, 25 years of being dedicated to this district. Thank you, Ms. Dando. Thank you. Robin, I'd also like to say thank you for all your help and advice and we're going to miss you so much, but thank you for all you've done for the students. Thank you. I agree. Robin, 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 I liked it. I, I'm glad you kept a sense of humor in the room late at night and, uh, you know, always had, had the best interest of the district and the, the, the legacy information you had, historical information we would have never had. Uh, and it was just a pleasure serving with you. Thank you. 
I agree. gave a, a unique perspective on how to run a board meeting because every time we were off track, you always put us back on track again. <laughs> and I've known you now for I don't know how many years, and I think your perspective was always so welcomed on the board and was always definitely kids first oriented. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you. I agree. I agree with the putting the kids first. I got think of the kids, they've got to be first, and then everything else can come after that. Yeah. Thank I, you. I, I would say, Robin, you know, this is the second term that I'm serving with you. And in the first term, you took me under your wing and you, you taught me exactly the do's and the don'ts of being a board member. And you still remind us of the do's and the don'ts of being a good board member. So we all appreciate that. And um, we, we have your number. We'll be dialing you up for uh, anything that we need for sure. And I think a testament to you is that you win many, many years on a post because this community knows that you are a stellar board member and we thank you for your service. Thank you for all your kind words. I am, it was a tough decision. I'm going to miss all of you and I will be available for any, if you need anything on background history and even just event or chat, I can always go into executive session and I really did enjoy my 25 years on the board and I will miss it but I know the kids will be taken care of with all of you guys. And thank you for all your kind words. Thank you, Ms. Dando. Thank you so much. Um, Ms. Lowy, anybody, any other teachers here, um, you're welcome to stay, but I know you are very busy as well. So thank you again for your service and congratulations. Okay. Well-deserved, only be healthy. So thank you. Thanks, Next guys. on that was so nice. and Ms. Dando, if okay, if okay, I will either. I don't know if you're coming later or if you would like, I could drop off your gifts courtesy of uh, the math. I think I'm, I'm not going to I'll let you know after. All right, we could talk. We could talk later. Yeah. Um, next, under my report, as you know, the school district election is taking place right now. Um, we really don't know what time we will be finished. This is the first time we're doing this, and I would be happy to keep you um, updated. I can either text or email. I know Mr. Cronin is planning to come up. I'm hoping that midnight is uh, the absolute latest, but as I mentioned, by 1030, we think we'll have a really good sense of when we will be finished, and then we will, of course, get the word out. I think you also know, as um, you received the memo from Ingram and Smith, that if we did have to, if the budget does not pass, the uh, Board of Education has two choices, um, well, several choices, putting up the same vote uh, budget for a revote, putting up a different budget for a revote, or going straight to a contingent budget. Based on the timeline, you probably saw the memo that we would have to go to a contingent budget for several weeks because of the way the fiscal year ends June 30th and the fact that um, what we understand from the governor, but we don't have final information, is that a revote date would either be July 21st or 28th. So fingers are crossed that we will have to do that. And I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank Mr. Cipriani and Mr. Butler but also Ms. Nolan and all of the workers to this evening, uh, counting the votes uh, with all due diligence and guidance, and also to Ms. Fabrizio, who worked diligently um, related to communication with the community. And I'd also like to thank any members of our community um, who are there this evening and thank you for your support. And um, we will get the word out about the um, results later this evening or first thing in the morning. Next, under my report, we have had a busy couple of weeks with some of our newer committees. Really excited to have um, the input of members of our Board of Education on these committees. We had a district re-entry committee last week. The next one is this week. I believe that um, it was really very um, um, beneficial to have a number of voices at the table, including members of the Board of Education, um, administration, teachers, custodial workers, and, um, and family members. Um, we talked about the charge to the committee. We talked about the phases that we know from New York State. We talked about what available guidance we have, and more importantly, what guidance we don't yet have. 
We talked about anticipated phases within the district and the feedback from everybody was that while we need to have multiple plans and of course we will, um, the feedback has been that everybody wants their children back in school. Our teachers want to be back in school. We all want to be back in school. So we will be working toward that with, of course, all safety precautions as outlined by the CDC and the Department of Health. We reviewed the steps that have already been taken in terms of items that have been purchased and um, that will be purchased. And then we broke up into um, subcommittees who are um, being led by different individuals, including um, we have the people subcommittee in terms of how we're going to move people in each building. And that's being led by each principal with various other constituents from each school. We have a committee that's basically called places, all the cleaning, all the protocols that need to be in place. Mr. Cipriani is chairing that committee processes, medical processes in terms of screening, contact tracing and testing. And that's Ms. McCartney and Dr. Strasberg. And then we have another committee on students, academic, mental health and social emotional needs with focus on our academic program, mental health needs, social emotional needs and supports for subgroups. And Mr. Trentowski is chairing that committee. Our next meeting is on Thursday, this Thursday, June 18th at 4.30. And I know our subcommittees are hard at work and will be ready to report out on their membership and steps they have taken. Um, Ms. Santos and Mr. Cronin, um, is there anything else from that committee meeting that you would like to share with the rest of the Board of Education? No, I think you're yeah, just looking at my notes quick. I think you covered just about everything we talked about that day. Ms. Santos? Um, I would just, it might be interesting for the public to know, you know, when we expect to maybe have some guidelines from the state regarding reopening. Yeah, so I mentioned we don't have the guidance. It is anticipated that we will have the guidance sometime this month. It is June 16th, and we do not yet have that guidance. I think you saw the information for the um, meetings that are taking place around the state um, to get feedback yeah. from constituent groups. So I find it interesting um, that th when the meetings are taking place and that my understanding from what we've received from the state um, is that the, guidance docu um, that the guidance document will be presented for discussion on July 13th True. by the Board of Regents. So these two things, I don't know exactly how they fit in your heads, but the, doc the timelines don't really make a lot of sense to me because we've also been told that we will need to submit plans in July. Newsday reported July 15th, but we have not received any such written guidance that I see that says July 15th. So Ms. Santos, thank you for pointing out that we have received almost no guidance so far from the state which I believe would come from both the state education department as well as the Department of Health. And Dr. Seinfeld, isn't that true that they said it has to be approved by August, right? That's correct. Now we have looked at um, various plans that we know that businesses, for example, have to submit and also at plans that we know that day camps now have to submit. And I assume the template will be similar. So we're working diligently on that, and we really hope to have all students back in school and all uh, staff back in school safely in the fall. Dr. Seinfeld, have we offered any teacher that may need guidance with remote learning? Maybe they, you know, they, they might need some instruction, some, some uh, tips. Have we offered that to them in the event that there's more remote learning in the fall? Yes, and as a matter of fact, we have two superintendents conference days this Thursday and Friday that will largely focus on many of the tools that would be um, implemented in the fall if we do have to return to d a digital environment. So we're, we're confident that all teachers will be comfortable re with remote learning, if, if need be. That is correct, and we will support any who need additional support to make sure they're meeting our standards. Thank you. We also had a meeting of the district-wide academic committee. It was actually our second meeting. Um, we have another meeting scheduled for this Friday, June 19th, 
As a reminder, uh, Ms. Castro Giovanni, Ms. Kowalski, and Ms. Mr. McAvoy have volunteered to serve on that committee. I think we had a really fruitful and positive conversation with our goal being how to always put our district in the best possible light from an academic standpoint. We talked about student competitions, which we have um, done, I think, a very good job of increasing over the years and how we can continue to grow in that area. We talked about science research and social science research. And I know some of you, I think, were able to join our research symposium. And I thank um, Ms. Ostroff for, mm -hmm. for putting that together. I thought that was wonderful. We'll talk more about that at our meeting on Friday. We talked about um, state test participation and making sure our community, our entire learning community, understands the implications and the the, um, the outcomes if we don't meet certain benchmarks and the fact that it is required that we test 95% of our students. We talked about how we could do additional student recognition for academics and also staff recognition. And we then um, spoke at length about some of the ratings that we know that um, people look at when they're making a decision, which district do I want to buy a house? And so I think our frame of reference is the 35 year old couple who's moving from Manhattan and, and district shopping and how can our numbers look such that everybody wants to come to Oyster Bay? How can we make sure that everybody knows that our academics are um, up to everyone's standards so that everybody knows what that this best kept secret in Long Island is all about academics, as well as, of course, the arts, athletics and activities. So I don't know if any other members of the committee would like to um, share anything with the rest of the board. And we also decided that we're going to meet approximately twice a month and report back regularly to the whole board of education. Yes. Um, you know, one of the goals of this academic committee was, you know, to really look at our own board board goals, which is the increase to increase student achievement in our schools, whether it's by test taking, whether it's by by the AP scores, whether it's um, uh, college placement. Um, also, you know, even if we do reopen, what is the best type of learning that can happen if we have to go online? Um, what kind of systems can we use? Should we have um, multiple systems where, where lectures can be recorded in case people can't see them at this time that they're given so they can go back and see them or even if they do see them, go back and relearn them? I mean, that type of mentality of how can we best give our learning in our district? And I think it's something that I think we're all coordinated on. And it is our board goals. It's always been our board goals to improve student achievement. I think this is one of the better ways that we can do is by having these small group committees to focus on that, as, as well as looking at uh, from the outside, why are people looking at, why are our scores from some of these rating companies so low looking from the outside in when they really shouldn't be? So we're looking at how can we improve those? I think it's just overall, it'll be a, a real focus you know, twice a month on what can we do as a, as a school district. And I think we have to increase what we can do with the lower schools too, that it can't just be, oh, we have the best high school. We have the best, we have to think about what we can do with the younger kids too. What can they do? How can they do well on a test? Um, so I think that's something we have to think. So just a reminder that our next meeting is Friday morning. We'll continue the conversation around um, some of the topics, including our next one, which is student awards. So I did include in the Board of Education packet uh, some data related to um, our athletic awards. And I know that we also you're also aware that we had our underclassmen academic awards. And um, I understand and uh, Mr. Trentowski also understands that the goal here is not to take anything away from seniors, but how can we increase opportunities to recognize underclassmen so that they can be always put be put in the best light possible um, for their college applications and beyond. And so um, we are working together toward that goal. And that's something that we'll be talking together about at our committee meeting on Friday morning. So I thank you for that. And Unless there are any questions or comments about my report, um, I will turn it back to you, Mr. Cronin. Thank you, Dr. Seinfeld. 
Uh, let's go to business and facilities report. Mr. Cipriani. Thank you very much. Um, the item uh, under budget, we had a, a question from a community member about uh, the potential savings this year as a result of the, the pandemic and what we would do with that future money or how it might affect future budgets. And, you know, as we've been talking about, um, it, we will have a, a, a bigger than normal surplus at the end of this year. But we do face challenges next year. Um, and we are purchasing items this year with that money. At the end of next fiscal year, obviously, um, we're not going to have the surplus that we have this year. So um, we are planning for a possible reduction in state aid. We're looking at increases in pension costs, um, probably a low consumer price index CPI as we create the 21-22 budget. And health insurance really is kind of a wild card too. We don't know what those rates are gonna look like. So it's great that we're gonna have uh, a good surplus this year, but remember, we always have to plan for not just the next year, but two years from now, but we have to look at numerous years into the future. So. Um, so we have to be conservative in the use of that money. We have to think about what we're facing in the future um, and, and not utilize too much at one time so we don't want run into spikes or potential cuts and things like that. So, so it's really managing those, those additional funds going forward, and that's what we will do. Mr. Cipriani, what is the, um, what's the expected finish date of the turf field? So it looks like it's going to be completed in September. I say in September because, you know, if we have a rainy two weeks and, you know, the weather is not cooperating, that's going to lower, uh, that, that's going to increase the, uh, the time to complete. Um, but we did have uh, a walkthrough with the vendor this week. They put up the fencing to fence around the area so that uh, nobody is going to, uh, to use the track. We put out communication to the community that they cannot use the track. Uh, we looked at the uh, the pools uh, that are around for drainage. Um, they had the pools going back deeper into the wood. I asked them to bring those closer so that it would have a minim more of a minimal impact on the reduction of, or cutting down of trees. So that's another thing that we looked at. Um, but yeah, we have a very good uh, land tech is is the the vendor, and they really are the the gold standard when it comes to turf field. So. Um, in terms of getting the proper vendor, we have them, um, and we feel confident that uh, that I say conservatively um, by the end of September, but um, but they're hoping it's going to be sooner than that. Thank you, Mr. Absolutely. Cipriani. I just want to add one thing to what you were saying regarding um, the excess fund balance. You yeah. know, it's particularly important right now during COVID that. Um, Issuers that want to access the public market, like for our TAN or for our bonds for our capital improvements, that we have these types of funds on hand to make up for these type of shortfalls that we could have if we see issues with collection of property taxes, delays in these property taxes, that we are able to access the public market in order to make up for short-term financing in case we have these budget gaps. And I think what's critical right now is that, you know, us as an issuer and having such a high rating, that really lowers our cost of funds when we go to the public market. And it also allows us to have access because we can tell Moody's and our investors that, yes, we have excess budget funds that we yeah. can use and that we're not running at a deficit. I mean, that's critical when you need yeah. market access. When so I, I have that rating call, public correct. Understand that, you know? Yeah, when I have the ratings call, you know, one of the most important things they're asking about is our fund balance, our history of fund balance, how much we borrowed in the past in terms of TANS, and we, we, we borrow a very small percentage in relation to our budget, and we have strong fund balances. Um, those are two factors that help our bond rating, and as you said, it really lowers our cost of borrowing. So those are, are very significant things that other districts may not have. You know, some districts um, may pay a significantly higher rate because they don't have fund balance. They, they don't have a good balance sheet. They don't have good finances. And, and that could wind up costing a lot of money over many years. So 
Um, so yeah, you're right. You know, thankfully we, we are in a very strong situation and, and we, we intend to keep it that way. Yeah, I, I know certain taxpayers feel that we should be running our budgets much tighter, but it's, but in the investing public thinks just the opposite, right? Mm -hmm. In New York State, we're limited to a 4% on designated fund balance. Correct. So we need to ensure that we have excess funds every year if we want to have that ability to access the public market at a reasonable rate and keep our rating as high as it is. Because, you know, not only has the school perform is important to people looking at school districts, but our bond rating is very important as well. And that Absolutely. keeps our bond rating one of the best on Long Island. That's true. Absolutely, yes. Thank you for that. Thank you, Ms. Santos. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Cipriani? No, I mean, our other, you know, we, we did have a walkthrough for our other summer projects, the, uh, the casework and ceiling and lighting project at Vernon, the high school cafeteria ceiling and lighting project as well. That's also going to be completed this summer. Um, we looked at the, uh, we walked through for the boiler upgrade that is expected to be completed this summer as well. Um, and we had a good result for the, uh, the bidding for the, the Roosevelt uh, playground, that middle playground that always floods when there's a big rainstorm and the students can't use it for a few days. So we, we had, got a very good number on that one as well. So, um, so we're doing that and also some masonry work over the summer additionally. Thank you, Mr. Cipriani. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? No? Okay. We'll move on to personnel actions. <clears throat> Professional personnel resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education of the Oyster Bay East Norwood Central School District hereby approves the following professional personnel and civil service personnel resolutions as listed. It goes all, if you have paper, it goes all the way to the top of page five. <clears throat> The motion? So moved. The second? Second. Uh, second. Anybody on the question? Any questions? I just have a question. Um, this agenda where it says, like, for the teaching assistance 3.5, it says see attached list and um, a couple other places, 3.2. Is the, is the list actually attached to the agenda that the public sees? Dr. Seinfeld, you're, you're on mute. There you go. Yes, Ms. Castro Giovanni, um, I thank you for pointing that out a few months ago, and it has always been posted. Did you look this time and it was not by any chance? No, I didn't look online. I know I got it. I just wanted to make sure that it's posted. Yes, we corrected that, but I will double check just in case. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other I have questions? a question. Mr. Cron, I have a question. The, um, the specialized instruction materials, can, can you someone elaborate on what that is? Uh, 2.5 and 2.6? Yes. Um, so you may recall that we worked with uh, Ms. Lowy to develop a plan for parent training that was uh, a money savings, if you will, for uh, parent training and educational consulting for materials to assist students with disabilities as per their individualized education plans or IEPs. So that's all in special education. I'm sorry, they're just preparing that or doing that? They are preparing the materials for the parent training and the home services related to students' IEPs. We've done this in the past, Dr. Seinfeld? Yes, we have. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Aye. Carried. We'll go to business actions. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education of the Oyster Bay East Norwich Central School District hereby approves the following business resolutions as listed and it goes to g h motion so moved second 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 any questions i i do Good, Mrs. Um, Giovanni. thank you uh so d the extra classroom activities funds 
I was just curious what's going on with the class fund for class of 2020. Back in February, they had $10,264. And now in May, they still have $10,209. So it looks like $55 was spent. I thought that they were the student leaders and the advisors were coming up with some things to use for this, our graduating seniors. Any thoughts on why we haven't spent any of the money? That is the plan, and it is related to um, plans, hopefully, for some type of gathering when it's safe to do so. Not necessarily a full formal prom, but other types of events that um, the students really still want to be able to do. And Ms. Lasher is working with a group of seniors and families related to those events. Does that answer your question? Um, I guess so. I'm just not sure. Maybe they, maybe Miss Lasher should send something out because I, a lot of senior parents keep asking me what's going on. They know that there's a lot of money in that fund. So maybe even though if they don't have decisions, there is a committee, but maybe they could just communicate to senior parents. Okay. I will follow up and be sure. I mean, I know she's met with them a number of times, but I don't know if it specifically has been about these funds. So I will be sure. Yeah. I'm not sure the people that are asking me are necessarily on the committee, but maybe just to let the, all the parents know that they're working on it would be good. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Kester Giovanni. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No? no? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Carried. We'll go into special services. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education of the Oyster Bay East Norwood Central School District, hereby approve the following special services resolutions as listed. And it goes actually pretty far this time. The top of page nine. <clears throat> Motion? Motion. So moved. Second. 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 Under question, any questions? No? Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's carried. We'll go into new business. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education of the Oyster Bay East Norwood Central School District, hereby approves the following new business resolutions as listed. And there's two. Motion? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Any questions? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Carried. Um, discussion of the Board of Education 2021 planning. Yes. Um, so, Mr. Cronin, I could jump in on that. So, at our reorganizational meeting, we typically appoint members of the committees. So, it would be helpful if we have the input from the board in terms of what committees you would like to serve on so we could prepare that agenda appropriately. So first, the district safety team, Mr. McAvoy and Mr. Cronin, would you like to continue on that? And of course, remember that um, we, again, thank Ms. Dando for her service. We'll have a new board of education member who we can, of course, add to the agenda as well. Um, but first, district safety team, Mr. McAvoy, Mr. Cronin? Yes, I would. Yes. Thank you. The wellness committee right now is Dr. Ross and Ms. Castro Giovanni. Any thoughts on that one? I would, I would, I would actually be interested in uh, if there's an opening moving to the policy committee and maybe. I was just going to volunteer you for that one, Nancy. Oh. <laughs> and maybe, maybe step down from wellness. Uh, Dr. Ross, are you willing to continue serving on the wellness committee? Yep, I'm perfectly happy doing that. Okay, so perhaps if the rest of the board agrees, we could see if the, whoever um, has the most votes this evening joins the wellness committee if he would like to. Mm -hmm. The audit committee, I assume everybody is comfortable as we are now, which is the entire board plus the two outside members who I think have been very valuable members of our committee. Yes. Yep. Okay. And then I'm just putting this on now just so we don't lose track of it for the future, but I'm assuming that the two committees that just formed you're not sick of me just yet, and you'd like to continue working with both the district reentry committee, Mr. Cronin and Ms. Santos? Yes. And the district wide academic committee, Ms. Castor Giovanni, Ms. Kowalski, and Mr. McAvoy. Yes. 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 Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Seinfeld. Uh, anybody for Friday packet? Anything in the Friday packet? Anybody like to discuss? No. Ms. No. Santos? So, yes? Yeah, well, there was something that we had discussed in the past, and I just want to bring it up again um, regarding the scope for the summer. So have we ultimately decided if we are going to um, be providing uh, scope services for first responders? We still have not received definitive guidance, so we have not signed up to continue with that because we're still awaiting the direction from the governor. Uh, most districts um, did sign up through scope because it made the most sense, especially since there were a few students here and a few students there to consolidate resources and it was fairly reasonably cost uh, at a fairly reasonable cost. But Mr. Cipriani, am I correct that we still don't have that definitive yeah. guidance? We still have not gotten guidance yet. We're looking for it. Okay, great. So we're not going to continue that service until we receive more information from our governor, right? Because that was via an executive order, right? That is correct. I mean, if the board would like to discuss moving forward with that anyway, it was only for first responders, as you know, and um, medical workers. Um, but we have not received that guidance, so we have not moved forward with that at this time. But I'm open to discussing it with the board, of course. No, I wanted to make sure we weren't moving forward with it. I think that's the right decision. If if the executive order says we have to, then we will. But if not, I don't think that's a service that we normally provide. Thank you, Ms. Santos. Anybody else on Friday packet? No? I just like one thing. Um, I just want to thank the entire board. My uh, year as president it was a very, very busy year. Uh, thank you, Dr. Seinfeld, and to your staff and everybody. Uh, I know we've spent a lot of times on phone calls and meetings and everything. I thank everybody for being there and getting through it with all of us, and especially with me as a new president and all the meetings we had to go to. Um, it was a very busy year and I know everybody came together whenever we needed a meeting, everybody was there, everybody had great input. Um, I just want to say thank you again for your support. And thank you, Todd. Thank you, thank Todd. You, Todd. Yes, thank you, Todd. Uh, so at this time, I guess we're going to reconvene. Mr. Cronin, I'd just like to say um, there's always a, it's really important um, and very special relationship and partnership between a superintendent of schools and the president of the Board of Education. And so I, too, would like to thank you for your service as president and for your partnership with me and always just being there and knowing that it's all about the kids and all kids. So thank you. Thank you. And I just and to Ms. Kowalski for always being there and helping me or help her. Her typing everything up for me. It was uh, <laughs> taking notes. It was made my life a lot easier this year. Thank you, Ms. Kowalski. No problem. Um, so at this time, we have to reconvene to exec, correct? We do need a brief executive session. And then just a reminder that if you do want to head to the high school library, yes. check in on the voting, or I can text or email you. I would give you a sense of when we'll know our results. Oh. Uh, but... Uh, we do need to go back to exec is correct. Okay. So, Ms. Dando, would you like would you like to reconvene us? <laughs> you're on, you're on, you're on, you're on. We'll go reconvene. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the minutes for this meeting. Sure. <laughs>